in the Pacific store, there's a treasure that doesn't just look dangerous. It's hazardous from the inside out. It's the dried skin of a fish called the puffer. In some countries, this fish is considered a delicacy, despite the fact that it could kill you. It contains toxins 1,200 times more deadly than cyanide. Well, that's a good incentive to stay clear of the puffer fish, except in the Pacific, where they meet this menace head on, literally. This helmet comes from Kiribati, which is a group of islands in the central Pacific. They wore these helmets in part to intimidate their opponents in organised fights. The hat itself is pretty brittle, so you'd wonder if it would really stand up to blows from um, weapons or clubs. But it's also quite scary looking, so intimidation and making yourself appear bigger or scarier than you really are is an important part of any fight. Mm -hmm. So I guess these helmets with these spikes and, and um, spines would have have done that really well for the warrior. The pufferfish is not always this shape. When faced with a predator, it swallows a huge amount of water to expand its stomach and inflate to a ball several times its normal size. On the islands of Kiribati, they caught inflated pufferfish and buried them in the sand. In just a week, only a hard, empty ball remained. They split the dried fish in half and reinforced it with coconut shell to produce a protective helmet. The Kiribati people were able to utilise a lot of things from the environment, which included this waistband, if you like, made from the skin of a stingray. It's really rough and quite, quite solid. I guess it would protect you from some of the evil weapons that these people made. They were um, really efficient weapons in some ways. They were, they were lined with um, shark teeth and they could make some horrific injuries, you know, cuts and abrasions on the body. These pieces that we see here were part of a bigger outfit, which included, if you like, um, long johns made from coconut fibre, very prickly. This would have gone over the top of that. The belt around the waist and the pufferfish helmet that we saw before would have been on the head. If I look at the size of that armour, it doesn't look very big. It doesn't look like I could fit into it. What does that say about the physical characteristics of the Kiribati people? For us, it means that the people were either very small at that time or else only young men, small, smaller teenagers, I guess, could wear these, these garments. This is one of the mysteries of, I don't know, Kiribati material culture. How did they see through that gap? You know, they've got small heads, the arms come through here. How are they worn? And these are some of the mysteries and some of the research problems that people who study the, the cultures of the Pacific and warfare would be interested in. Who would have thought such dangerous sea creatures could be so helpful? Thanks to the pufferfish and the stingray, Kiribati warriors got a chance to fight another day.